Hey everyone, it's great to see you. I had a very good day today because I was able to visit one of my favorite places, Hidden Gardens in Barrington, Rhode Island, and they had in some beautiful fall selections. So, of course, I had to bring a few things home. I'm going to show you how I can quickly update one of my bags in a pot in a pot to make it look more fall-like. But first, I have to show you these fabulous plants that I got. So first of all, take a look at this. This is a huge, beautiful heuchera. This one is called magma, and it just has this beautiful, deep, vibrant red color that when you get to this time of year, I just start feeling all those fall colors. And now Heuchera likes shade, part shade, and it's a perennial. So yes, I'm going to be putting this in a pot probably because my Heuchera seem to love to overwinter in pots, but you also can keep this in on the ground. And I know that it was worth the investment today because as a perennial, I will get to enjoy this next year too. So I was really excited to find this beautiful Heuchera, also called Coral Bells. Those are the, the usual name for it. Now, take a look at this. Oh my goodness. This is a Rebecca Autumn Colors, and this time of year, you are seeing a lot of Rebecca out at nurseries, and there's lots of different varieties. Usually, your fancier kinds like this are an annual type, and this is an annual type, but it is gorgeous. It just says Autumn to me, so I'm very excited about that. And then back here, oh my goodness. This fern is so beautiful, it almost doesn't look real. It has this red tinge to it and sort of shiny leaves, ripply, I love it. Now this one is called the red leaf tree fern. And the red leaf tree fern actually is only a perennial to zone nine. So if you live in Florida, great one to find. For here, this is going to be an annual for me, but it has that fall tinge to it. It's going to be a striking centerpiece. Then I got a couple, a couple, a few more than a couple, uh, little small filler plants here. And yes, I know I have a ton of coleus, but some of these are different. And I like the unique colors in this that look so fallish. So this one is called Under the Sea Copper Coral. And you know, it sort of does look like Under the Sea Copper Coral with that ripply edge there. And this one also has sort of that ripply edge look. I don't see a name on this, but I grew this one last year, also got it at Hidden Gardens. And this is not a sponsored video, by the way. I was just so excited to go to one of my favorite places. To see this nice burgundy color in the center is just so pretty. I picked up one kale plant because it's kale and it's fall. It always looks good in a planter somewhere. And that's an ornamental type of kale, of course. And this is called, uh, this is a euphorbia actually called Ascot Rainbow. These variegated leaves just really, I don't know, jumped out at me. So I was like, I haven't planted that. I think that's something that I need. And then also new to me is this Swedish Ivy. So this is really cool. This is a fancy fillers guacamole and Swedish Ivy. Look at how the leaves are variegated with this bright green color. And if you flip them over, they're purple. That is awesome. So I don't know, this is a great filler spiller. Um, I just thought it was a cool plant. This actually can be grown as a house plant too, apparently. And then last for my purchases today was this Coleus Bryce. Canyon and once again, it just has that real nice fall burgundy color So I am going to have a blast putting these together in different arrangements over the next couple videos today Not today in the next week or so um, But today what I'm going to be focusing on Is this Rudbeckia? So let me show you what we're going to do so here I have one of my large planters, and in this planter, you know I have a nursery pot and I have a bag in the nursery pot. Now, this bag in the pot 
has this beautiful hydrangea in it. This is my Mars hydrangea, City Line Mars. I love it. It bloomed beautifully. And now it's done. I have trimmed off the blossoms. They didn't really age very well. And the green foliage looks nice, but I am quite happy now to be able to lift that part out put it somewhere in the garden, the green foliage will look good, and put something more spectacular in here. So the reason we do our planters is to show off the best things in the garden for that moment. So in the spring, I had tulips in the middle, and then I had my hydrangea in bloom. Now we're getting to fall, it's time to switch it up. So with the bag in the pot, all you have to do is find your handles of the bag, I say all so confidently, <laughs> and you have to lift it out. Now, sometimes this is a two-person job, but look at that. It just lifts out like that, and there is my hydrangea. Now, this hydrangea is one that overwinters in my shed, but it doesn't go into the shed until about December 1st here in Zone 6B. So I'm just going to keep watering it, keep it as part of the garden. It'll blend in and be ready then for next year. So there is my centerpiece. I'm going to put that to the side. Okay, but my pot needs something back in the center. You can see I have my sweet potato vine. I have some of the beautiful petunia that is still coming, but you know what? It's looking a little past, that's fine. Let's put this gorgeous Rubecchia in the center. And I think that this beautiful contrast of this orange gold color with the purple will just be spectacular. Now, to make sure that I have a good working area, I've taken another bag. I've taken another nursery pot. This is the same nursery pot that's in here. I'm gonna put the bag in here just to keep it sturdy while I plant it. I actually could do it right in there, but I'm gonna do this to show you more clearly. This nursery pot though is not going in that pot. This is just to hold it here for filming purposes. I'm gonna start by adding some potting mix to my bag. And remember, you're always using potting mix, not soil, because this keeps a nice moisture ratio for your planter. So I put that in and then, oh my goodness. So I know that this is only an annual, but it is beautiful. The great thing with your Rubecchia is that you can get a nice variety of these yellow and gold blossoms with the deep center. Now, if you're lucky enough to have a perennial type of Rudbeckia, um, they're usually what we call a short-term perennial in that they do reseed. So they might last a few seasons and reseed in the same place so it seems like they're always coming back. We often call those black-eyed Susans. The fancier types, which often vary in color a bit like this, or they might have double layers of petals, are your annual types. You also could collect seeds from those too and actually plant them for next year, but I have not reached that level of gardening yet. For now, I still just like to visit the nursery and get them all grown. And it's so much fun. They had a couple different types today at Hidden Gardens and it was hard to choose which one. So I can just put that in here. Now, if you didn't have as big of a Rubecchia as this, you could put some other things around here, add in some coleus, that would be fine. But this one just is so big and beautiful. I'm just gonna be able to add some of the potting mix around here and it will take up this whole area. And you also wanna be thinking about the height of your central focal piece here. So just like with the hydrangea, this really gives you some nice height for the center because our trailing plants, they're doing pretty well. So we need something that's going to peek over the top here now for the rest of the season. Let me just add in a little more soil here. And you know, for this, I probably am not even going to add any biotone to this. I will, in my usual every other week water soluble fertilizer, wow, that was a mouthful, um, process here, be giving them some water, water soluble fertilizer. I happen to use the proven winner type, but there are lots of different types out there. Okay, that looks pretty good. I'm gonna tuck my handles, actually not tuck my handles in this one because this nursery pot isn't going it. 
I'm gonna shake it out of the nursery pot. Okay, there we go. Now it's just in its bag. Put the nursery pot to the side, clear out my area, and let's see how it looks. I can lower it right in. Oh my goodness. Look at that. And you, of course, can settle it so you see the prettiest side facing you. That is spectacular. It's like instant color, instant impact, and it's so easy to switch up. So I am going to be doing this with a number of my planters. You'll be seeing that, but so pretty. And now I can look out on the deck and just feel like there's a little hint of fall there a little extra pop of color. So I hope that if you've tried the bag in the pot and the pot method here, you get to update those planters for fall. And if not, really consider doing this for next year. I'm gonna link the larger pots that I use, the bags, the nursery pots. I'll link all of those things down below. It might be something that you wanna put on your Christmas list so that you have all of those supplies ready to go. Thanks so much for joining me and I'll see you in the next video.